Oh, hello, oh, Simone, and I'm feeling a bit exasperated because I've just been broadcasting, well, I thought I was broadcasting, a video for you guys, and it wasn't even recording. So all my energy and my excitement, my enthusiasm went to waste. But anyway, um, it's going to be a much done, more diluted video, but it's about children who are in domestic abusive relationships and how, you know, we look at those who are doing well. You know, we have a lot of parents, especially on Facebook, or my child graduated, my child um, is a manager, my child is this, my child is that. And there are a lot of children who are doing well, but there are a lot of children who are suffering in domestic abuse homes, in homes where there's domestic abuse. And the police are giving 669 referrals a day for domestic abuse. And you can imagine why that's happening. Because of um, no jobs, because of bills, because of we're hearing now about um, the fuel prices. And the, these figures were in 2021. So you know that was during COVID when people were pressurised. It was like they were in a pressure cooker. They were in their homes and they couldn't go anywhere. They couldn't have a break. And so they took it out on their spouses. And the children are watching. The children can't get away. And parents seem to think that the, par the children will get over it. It doesn't really affect the children. I'll give them a little hug afterwards. I'll tell them it won't happen again. I'll tell them that I'm sorry. And the beating that they just saw me get or the strangulation or hit over the head with something, they'll be okay. They'll get over it. No, they don't. The trauma lasts a lifetime. There are so many children who are suffering, who are self-harming, who are committing suicide because they come from homes where there's domestic abuse. And I tell you about my, my friend often who how she, she witnessed, I mean, I know she wasn't a child under 18, but she was just turning 19. And she witnessed her mother, her father and her husband being stabbed to death. She tried to intervene, ended up with a punctured lung. She ended up in a, try, trying to get to grips with everything. She ended up in a series of relationships that were unhealthy. And in the end, I don't know if she took her own life or whether um, she overprescribed herself with medication, but she died prematurely. So, and then you think about that mother in, um, in Jamaica where her children was witnessing before they were stabbed to death, their mother being stabbed to death. If they had lived, what would that have done to them? What would they have grown up to be? And that's the world we're living in. We cannot just turn a blind eye to children in homes where there's domestic abuse. These children... What will they grow up to be? They'll either grow up perpetuating that behaviour or they might say, look, this is not what I want for my family. I'm not going to deal with anything that is violent or antagonistic or abrasive. So um, <clears throat> I'm just going to read it quickly now because this is the second time I'm doing it. So like I said, it's wonderful seeing children who have graduated who are doing well as young adults because they had at least one caregiver who was stable and cared for them. But did you know that according to NSPCC, the police made almost 245,000 referrals to social services for domestic abuse in 2021. This was during the COVID pandemic causing children experiencing abuse to be trapped at home and cut off from their support networks during lockdown. Police in England and Wales made on average 669 children child protection referrals a day to social services in the last year, an 8% increase from previous years. These parents aren't psychopaths. They tend to be parents with poor coping skills, mental problems, some may be drug addicts. Many of them are in dire straits financially. So they take their frustration out on their spouse and partner, oblivious of the impact on the children who are watching. So you can imagine now we have been told that we have fuel going up to like £500 extra a month. You know, for those spouses who've been looking after another spouse who's lost their job, how the hell are they going to cope? The only people who can cope are those on the dole. And there's this rumour that, you know, that they only want uh, middle class, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the rich and the poor. They don't want no middle class. So this is going to drive the middle class into poverty 
because how the hell are they going to afford to pay those that kind of money just on fuel bills? Not even food, not clothes, nothing. And for children where they used to be able to buy them shoes or whatever it is, they're going to have to say, no, I'm sorry, the child, the child starts screaming and what have you. What, what they have been doing all the time, but now the parent is under pressure. So you find a lot of parents abusing the child. Remember baby P, battered to death with so many bruise marks. So many children are being beaten mercilessly by parents or step-parents. Because whether it's pressure, whether it's because of drugs, that's what's happening. The children are vulnerable. The children, the who's supposed to be protecting the children are the adults. And the adults are abusing the children. It's very, very sad. Sadly, parents and other relatives pose the greatest risk. Most victims were maltreated by a parent. Some perpetrators are non-parent relatives. A small percentage are unmarried partners of parents and a very small percentage are unrelated adults. Sometimes it's not only the children witnessing their parents fighting and screaming, sometimes it is the parents mercilessly beating the children with instruments and all sorts. Children have been witnessing their pet mothers being strangled, hit over the head with pieces of wood, left unconscious, broken ribs, legs. It's hard to imagine what happens behind closed doors. And these are not exaggerations. Um, who will these children who witness their parents fighting, assaulting, trying to defend themselves, grow up to be? Will they decide that it's not what they want for themselves or people in their lives? Or will they grow up believing this behaviour is normal and perpetuated? Your guess is as good as mine. Um, you may recall, oh, sorry, the impact of children in domestic abusive homes cannot be underplayed. Most parents of such children tend to believe that their children and child will grow out of it. And like I said, that is not the case. It's called adverse childhood experiences. Children who are maltreated are much more likely to have physical and mental problems later on. They face a higher risk of suicide and get into trouble with the law. Safeguarding children protection services are good at limiting maltreatment among children who have neglected or abused. But how can they avoid that maltreatment happening in the first place? If the maltreatment could be addressed immediately, i.e. when the parents are stressed out and broke and the child is distressed, it could lower the risk of abuse in early childhood. But unless you have invasion of CCTV cameras in every household that has a child under 18, with staff allocated between 6am and midnight to specifically look at signs leading up to abuse shown on monitoring cameras, how can this be protected? It's just like the police. How do the police find criminals? Unless everybody's under CCTV. And even though there's CCTV, uh, you know, all over the place, there's still criminals who get away with murder and robbery and everything else. And it's the same with this. How do you stop it? How do you stop it? How do you protect the children? Like I said, we're now being warned about an increase of gas and electricity. How much pressure is that going to be put on parents under when they have children who do not understand their predicament? When spouses and partners may not have a job, are unsupportive and resentful. The state of the economy, rising prices, is taking its toll on the family, the poor and the middle class. Interest rates increasing, fuel utility bills... A campaign called Don't Pay UK is beseeching people not to pay the bills and saying that if everyone doesn't pay, then the government would be forced to redress the situation. But how many people can face the stress of possibility losing gas, electricity, red, lit red letters and bailiffs? Not everybody has the mind. And the thing is, you're still going to have to pay it. That's the problem. It's OK saying you're not going to pay it for two months, but you have two months worth of bills. And then what happens after that? These same people are telling you not to pay them. What They need a solution. They need to have some kind of fund for those who haven't paid it that they can pay it for them. Don't just tell people not to pay and think that it's going to go away. No, it's not. And we're moving into a social credit system. What happens then when you've got a background of not paying your bills? You then become one of those um, default um, citizens who can't get anything in the future, might not even be able to get a bus ticket, like in China. It's not, it's not fun, guys. What we're going into is not fun. It's, it's like 
It's like a deliberate, I'm not saying it is, but it's like a deliberate ploy to put people into debt, then bring in the social credit score system so that these people who are in debt are going to be under that social credit system and therefore not have any rights at all, won't be able to go anywhere, won't be controlled by the system. And then what? So what is the um, social credit system? It's a system that gives a national credit rating and blacklists people who fall below a certain credit rating. It was developed by People's Republic of China and there are rumours that it's coming to the UK. While it is meant to assess local government's performance and financial problems like their debts and contract defaults, it can extend to individuals who default on their contracts, i.e. phone, broadband, gas, electricity, etc. Because when you agree to um, gas and electricity, you've signed into a contract. Taking out a phone, you've signed a contract. Broadband, you're signing a contract. And yes, you might think, oh, you pay, you just do things willy-nilly, but you've signed into a contract, and therefore, if you've defaulted on the contract, your your credit score, your social credit score, will go will bottom. And the repercussions of having a low credit score, just look at it. Just look at China's credit card score system. I'm not saying that England is going to be as severe, but we do not know what's happening. And these are the pressures that people are under. And these people are under these kind of pressures. A lot of them take it out on their children because their children are whining and doing whatever they were doing all along. But the circumstances have changed. The children don't know the circumstances have changed. And how do you tell a four-year-old or a five-year-old, look, you know, I can't afford anything. I'm, you know, I'm at my wit's end. I can't pay anything and stop screaming at me. And, you know, and that's what happens. They, they, they lose control. They start having mental issues. Next thing you know, they hit the kid. It's the easiest thing for them to take their resentment out of. And the kid either dies or is bruised or is um, permanently disabled. And if not, it's mentally mentally disabled. So in certain cases, it even ranks your behaviour via CCTV, monitoring, online scrutiny, what you say online, what you do online. You know, for example, me doing these videos. I could be doing something wrong. I would be knocked down, even though my financial situation might not be hazardous at the moment. But the fact that, you you know, what they consider bad behaviour can put me in trouble, can put anybody in trouble, what you do, what you say on YouTube or any social platform under the social credit scoring system. So what has this got to do with domestic abuse and children? Because like I said, Parents are going to be pressured even more over time due to rising prices. And it's the children who will feel the brunt of their parents' frustrations. Children affected by domestic abuse in England and Wales have need to have, need to have access to local specialist and therapeutic services to support their recovery. But, it, but is this being looked at? Are there the resources? I don't know. Suffice it to say domestic abuse can take away a sense of security from a child and hugely impact their self-confidence. It can have a long-term impact on their emotional well-being and mental health, and parents need to be held accountable for destroying their children's life by making poor choices. And, yeah, okay, you can say, it's not my fault, I didn't know, I didn't know he was going to be an abuser, I didn't know he was going to be a narcissist, this and that. But the fact is, is that you've brought children in the world, and sometimes... Parents bring children in the world after knowing that person is a woman beater or a man beater. They still bring children in the world to witness that. Anyway, I know some of these things. It has got a lot to do with adverse childhood experiences. It's got a lot to do with mental issues. And sometimes these things cannot be avoided. But we have to try and do our best to protect the children, the vulnerable, the innocent. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.